At Kroger, we believe in higher standards for fresh. So we do up to a 27-point inspection on our produce. Like for oranges, we check for scarring and sunburn, allowing only the best produce to reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh for everyone, we believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Get more ways to save at the Buy 5 or More Save $1 each sale. Just buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. At SheFit, we're tired of hearing new year, new you, fat burning secrets, and lose weight fast. The only thing you need to lose is self-doubt. The body you're in deserves respect, love, and support. Support you're not getting from your current sports bra. It's time to experience the only sports bra that actually does its job and outperforms the most popular brands on the market. It's time to feel real support from SheFit. Save $10 today at SheFit.com slash 2022. And we are back. And that's what I think is so cool is that like communism, imagine any portion of Russia having a $1.5 billion trillion dollars invested in it. How mm-hmm. modern that area of Russia would be. But instead, uh, Vladimir Putin has a yacht. He has a house, you know, and when you see these things in real life, you see the villas, you see the uh, Trump Tower apartments, you realize that they're just sucking money out of Russian people's pockets. It is time now for something positive. We might be headed to the promised land of speaking the truth and finding our external liberty once we internally liberate ourselves. The problem can only be solved when there is a kind of coalition of conscience. Of conscience. Because conscience. that is how it works. This is the beginning. It is not the finale. And that's why we're here. And that's why we rally, 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 rally. rally. We've got to be that creative minority. Creative minority. Creative minority. Find a way to get in the way. I got in trouble. It was good trouble. It was necessary trouble. Frankly, I know we've got to do something. And I wanted to say that I kind of feel like Trump is a kleptocrat, not to be a dick. I feel like he just wants to siphon resources that should go to Americans into his own pocket any way he can. Oh, that's that's clearly evident based on the way that his oh, good. I, I, I try and stay <clears throat> middle of the ground, so I really don't want to attack him on a partisan level. I just feel like no. that's... <clears throat> like, he doesn't want to be communist. He doesn't want to be Vladimir Putin, but he wants to be communist like communist light. Like Bernie Sanders is to socialism. I feel like Donald Trump wants to be a communism. Well, he, he wants to be like the upper level of communism. He doesn't want like mm-hmm. any type of actual communism. And, and it's that, you know, he gets to have his assets. He gets to have his things and right. everybody contributes into it you know, him being him, right. but nobody gets any sort of benefit out of that. Everybody at the bottom gets to starve. The kleptocrat. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think that's what ends up like, you know, as we've talked about before, you know, communism on paper has always looked great mm-hmm. in practice. It looks like kleptocracy. Right. But I, I can imagine that's what I was trying to imagine was like Ukraine being this place where Vladimir Putin would have spent five point you know, $50 billion to make communism look good in Ukraine. Like, why wouldn't he just like go into Ukraine and walk around and hand people flowers and say, Hey, I'm Vladimir Putin. I love you. Come and join us. You know? Well, <laughs> and, and, and that's, um, that's that old mentality of, you know, old Soviet doctrine, um, versus what we did in the West, you know, <clears throat> we went in, we spent a bunch of money modernizing countries right and and when their economies took off on their own they would work with us yeah they were independent i mean two point i will say Mm -hmm. um it wasn't it wasn't until much it wasn't until i want to say like the late 50s uh that germany and japan were both allowed to like kind of branch off onto their own right um but even, you know, but even still, like, um, we, you know, the idea of hearts and minds was, is that, you know, if you go in and you give people 
good jobs, if you give them uh, sustainable living uh, conditions, that they're not going to they're not going to upend their society for right. that. And, and really, that's it, that's what it, Putin could have done. It's kind of a libertarian belief that we should stop taking the profits and prosperity from our government and investing them into a further bloated budget. And we should be sharing the prosperity of our good fortunes with the people. Like right now, we have an unbalanced uh, poverty line because a lack of resources are coming to the people that help. I know you think so, homeless people don't invest in the economy. They are a part of the economy. You know I, no, I mean? no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Not you um, personally. People overall have this view of right. poor people not being. Poor people actually fund our economy with our, <laughs> with our oversized interest rates and, you know, uh, student loans and things like that. So, so here's what I would say in terms of the libertarian perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at, when you look at, what it means to look at government funding you know, most of the time the way that we the way that a lot of libertarians look at how money gets sent to the government we know that it's there's a ton of waste we know that you know the accounting is questionable at best and we know that um what money is going to be spent is going to be overspent and underdelivered. You know, whereas, you know, if you were to put that hands and you put that money into the hands of regular American people or business people, they're going to spend that money more efficiently than the government ever could. And, and, and that's the truth. Correct. And, uh, because governments bloat everything up and, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you have administrators on top of administrators on top of administrators on top of administrators and each level of administrator takes more and more and more of a cut. Right. And until the point it's like, okay, cool. You know, if I wanted to buy this one, 100 watt solar panel, we say that, you know, you know, if the government buys this really stupid cheap one, Mm -hmm. you know, they're going to spend $25 out of a hundred on it. And all of that, the the rest of that hundred dollars is going to be spent on administrative fees. So you get one you get one solar panel, whereas you know you might get you know three and you know three and uh, let's say you know uh, half solar panels out of the same hundred dollars mm. because we don't have the same level of administration if you just put it into the hands of everyday people. So in in <clears throat> instead of actually being able to expand your purchasing power, you're limiting, you're limiting it because you have so much government involvement. Right. Okay. I dig it. I was trying to find, Mm -hmm. so Rick Scott came up with a list of uh, 11 things that the Republican party was going to work on. And I was looking for it because one of those Mm -hmm. things is government reform and debt. And he mm-hmm. feels that many government agencies should either be moved out of Washington or shuttered entirely. So that goes along with your views, right? Um, similar. I I believe that I believe that I don't know that moving the you know an agency out of an area makes any sense. Uh, it, there are certain realms where it does make sense. So, for example, like. BLM, the BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Mm-hmm. Most uh, Bureau of Land Management lands are in the western part of the United States, like a vast majority of them. Right. So when it comes to like the actual like management of those lands, I do believe that that should be done more locally if you're going to keep them in government hands. Right. The But it's all based out of D.C., and so it's more of a political branch than it is an actual management branch. And that's a problem because then you have a lot of political money being spent on politics rather than actual land management. So there's that. Good point. But there is a there is a cost to travel and administration. But yeah, like the, depart- the Department there of was Agriculture. A cost to travel. Like there was you a should- cost. You know, it, this is one of those things where we need to start thinking about this in terms of of modern day, not right. you know, 50 years ago. Yeah, it used to be a horse and buggy <clears throat> two months to get to Washington from, you know, your state. Or a $1,500 plane ticket. And look at, you know, you and I are literally on opposite ends of the fucking country and we're talking. Right. So let's be real honest. Like some of this stuff, you know, there needs to be, uh, there really needs to be 
a, a solid look at how this is being managed. Mm-hmm. I do believe that there are far too many administrators taking money out. And and really what it boils down to is, is that my view of it is, is that I would like to see a lot fewer portions of the government. And I really think that it needs a solid audit to uh, see where things are being spent. Because yes. there's so much money that gets spent on administrative stuff. What that means is, is that you're not actually getting product. You're not actually getting services. You're literally just paying for bodies. Yeah. And, you know, those bodies, I'm not saying they don't provide some level of service. But the more administration you have, the less you actually spend on the issue that you're claiming to spend money on. Mm. And that's the reality is, is that, you know, you have when you have that many levels of administration, each level requires more money because, you know, yeah. you have to administer the, you have to administrate the administrators and then mm-hmm. you have to administrate the administrators who administrate the administrators. And Don't the more that benefits. you do that, <clears throat> the more that you do that, the more money that you spend on things that are not actually, but by having, you know, something that's a lot more decentralized, you're now actually working on management you're actually providing better benefit and Mm -hmm. you're actually going to be able to make a difference and an effect. Like, for example, uh, this is a tough one, like national parks, for example, Um, national parks are always going to be a tough one. National parks need more money to keep themselves running and up to date, but you know, national parks are spread out all over the country. There's not like a vast majority in one or the other, you know, I mean, there's a lot on the Western, on the Western side. Yeah. But there's also a lot of national parks in the Eastern side. Oh yeah. So this is where the idea of decentralizing, uh, you know, or moving, moving a government agency doesn't necessarily make any sense because you're essentially what you're going to be doing is building a new office, spending a bunch of government money to have, the same level of administration just in a different part of the country. That doesn't make any sense. Right. You've already got, you've already got something built and administer, you know, and as an administrating from there, the question is, is you need to sit down and audit it and mm. how much money is going to waste. And that's the real question. Yeah. Cause I, I believe that I would, I would not agree with Rick Scott on a great many of things that should be eliminated. And, and that's the thing is like, I, I have not seen what his list is, so I have no idea what, what all he said needed to be eliminated. <clears throat> yeah, no. And I'll put, I'll put, I'm just going over the headlines of his proposals. Like I'll put the link in the, in the chat so other people can read it further. Like, okay. So number one, he wants to reform education. And what that says right here is we will inspire. Let's see what do we got. We will inspire patriotism and stop teaching the revisionist history of the radical left our kids will learn that's that's number one on his agenda for Republicans. okay so basically he wants right-wing propaganda to be taught instead of left-wing propaganda or, or no propaganda or none I'm, no the the fact is is that you know that whole like patriot history oh fuck off with that oh, shit i know okay. exactly what that means the 1776 project <laughs> right exactly it's like look you know i'm not yeah when you look at history this is the reality that people don't tend to understand history might be written by the winners but there's still the loser side and story that needs to be told as well and yeah it's hard to sit down and say okay which of this what of this is just you know patriotic embellishment and what mm-hmm. what of this is just you know the loser being butt hurt and embellishing on on you know the defeat that they took right rather than you know understanding that objectively you know the experience is awful and that you know people like me have a lot to appreciate based on how our world has progressed there are a number of people who have not gotten to progress in the same way and you have to be able to understand how that history has worked i mean what are we what are we going to tell people about slavery for example are we going to sit down and say oh no america is great because it was built on slavery you're going to be an idiot if you say that 
Well, the South says slavery was a good thing, that white people came and gave these people a place to live and work, and they treated them well and <clears throat> gave them everything no. they needed. You know, they celebrate it in certain towns in the South. I think in Georgia, they have a slavery day where they have black people doing the Uncle Tom sort of thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, think, I think school is based more on an outline as to where they show you a bunch of topics that are possible for you to continue learning, but they will never have the in-depth ability to teach anybody enough of anything to make them radicalized in one way or another. You know what I mean? We might learn about slavery on a half a page, but we also might learn about the... Um, the, pa the founders' papers. We I never learned about that in school. Mm -hmm. You have to have a further education to be radicalized in one way or another. You know what I mean? So school isn't going to do that. If they're talking about slavery, it's a very polished version of it. And if you want to learn more, you have to go continue your education. You know, right? And and I think that's you know, and and that's you know, like anything else. Like our our history needs to be very neutral. You know, yes, mm -hmm. we arrived we arrived by you know several ships from several different countries. Sure. But we also have to acknowledge that in order for us to live in those areas, we did have to kill Native American populations in order for us to take any sort of foothold. Right. And that and that those policies literally became a governmental policy, manifest mm -hmm. destiny, for example. Sure, sure, sure. But it wasn't just America at that time. You know, it was oh yeah, a, no. It was a slavery was a boom, a thing that started happening all over the place. White people started exploring and they found that brown people had brown servants. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they were like, we want that. So they started stealing brown people around the world. And brown people enslaved brown people too. And slaves in America were Muslim. They were Asian. They were black. They were poor, poor, um, mentally challenged white people. Slaves weren't demographically black they weren't monolithically black but in this day and age we really need to let people know that the way we treated a majority of the black slaves because mm -hmm. they were they were 70 80 percent but there was other people in there too you know what i mean and, but we need to get people to understand that black people weren't the problem and they're not the problem and i don't understand why denying that past is a a good thing you know what i mean i want to know everything but that's me and that's and, and but what it boils and what it also boils down to is you know everything is is become so polarized and and there's grand opinions on all of this stuff like mm -hmm. like critical race theory is one of my favorites like there's no high school or middle school or elementary school that's going to teach critical race theory why right. because you don't have educators in those roles that understand critical race theory and it's right. taught maybe in a couple of colleges and the reality is, is is that you know like i've said multiple times if you know anything about something called the three-fifths compromise welcome to the gateway to critical race theory sure i mean we're we're studying everything all the time we're analyzing everything all the time we're analyzing how laws affect race how they were used against minorities that's just something people do it's called thought it's called thought. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong. You know, there, there are people that are going to take it too far one way or the other, you mm -hmm. know, any type of supremacy is a bad thing. <laughs> Let's be but, real honest. But if you're standing in a store and you see a black man get tackled to the ground by a police officer and you think to yourself, I wonder if that was justified. Yeah. That's critical race theory. You're you're considering the way the law is being used against a minority. And even if you're, you're in your own personal life, you're still doing it. Like, I didn't get treated like that. Why does he get treated like that? Oh, I'm glad he gets treated like that. Or I'm not glad. That's critical race theory. <laughs> right. And that's and that's the real answer is, is that, you know, out of all of this stuff, it's that, you know, you have to you have to look at it objectively and yeah. there's going to be people on 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 multiple sides that are going to be pissed at you know at the data and the results that are collected and mm -hmm. and that's and, and that's okay because you know oftentimes you know we think we know what the answer is and then when we start to collect the data suddenly it's like oh shit that doesn't look anything like what i thought it would right but we're not we're not doing these things to blame white people like we're not thinking about that police officer tackling that black guy as a as a racial issue we're just like 
why is it affecting minorities more? But we're not seeing the the white officer as the blame. It's the system we're blaming, not the individual white people, you know? And I think a lot of white people are scared that they will have a guilt of culpability when it comes to slavery. That's not what it's about. We're not blaming the white people in 2022 for the past white people that did things, but we do want to balance the system a little bit. So it doesn't overly attack one group over another. And that's exactly just it. And that's, and that's, and, and that's the reality is, is that you have to objectively look at the system every, you know, you have to look at it all the time because mm-hmm. you have to see what's changing. Yeah. You know, that's, you look at drug laws, for example, like marijuana, marijuana is one of my favorite ones simply because like, you know, alcohol's alcohol is legal, but was prohibited. And we saw how that p- played out. Yeah. Marijuana, you know, it got it became illegal to use. And mm-hmm. when you look at the demographic of who got arrested for it, at some point that demographic changed and people started going, now oh, shit, we're getting, we're getting a lot of people across the board that are getting arrested for this. Well, maybe we need to look at how we're, how we're dealing with this. But, it, but the word, the popular the popularization of the word marijuana was a trope used against the Latino communities that it was coming from. Like it Mm -hmm. was coming from Mexico. So Mexicans, they must be using it. Let's call it marijuana, you know, to give it that Latino spin. So we suddenly hate Latinos for marijuana, but it turned out Jeffrey, we love Latinos for marijuana. (laughs) Well, it turned out too, that we also had a bunch of white people bringing weed in from other Uh parts of the world. Yeah. So we called it cannabis. So we called it cannabis. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, Oh, Hey, it's weed. Right. That's exactly the point. So, okay. Number two is awesome. Cause I think this is something we can all get on board on. And, uh, it is, we are going to eliminate racial politics in America. I color, think that's important. Colorblind equality. I love this. And it's from a Republican. Well, great. It, I mean, it should be. But that's, once again, when it comes to the politics side of it, you have to look at the lens of how it's affecting people. Mm-hmm. Any, any, any political <laughs> action that you take, you're going to have to back up that it has a neutral effect on any particular race. And, and the only way that you're going to be able to do that is number one input from, you know, a vast body of people. And number two, data that shows that what you have tried to implement actually works. So that's, that's something to keep in mind is that it's, it's not going to be just enough to sit, you know, to pass something that's going to make it neutral. You're going to have to collect data on it and ensure that it is staying neutral and whatever is affecting that is going to change. And I think that, you know, when you look at it, you know, this is something that we've talked about multiple times is, is that you have the left that inherently thinks that, you know, black people are going to vote Democrat. And it's a weird, it's a weird idea because, you know, I think we, you know, we all know that there's a, there's a large group of black conservative Christians out there that, you know, they're not going to vote Democrat yeah. you know, or, or, or there's a number of, you know, Lat- a lot of Latinos that come across, you know, they're very religious and conservative and the mm-hmm. idea that they're going to vote, you know, for Democrats just because they're Brown is really weird. Right. It's like, you know, a lot of, like a lot of them like have Paul, you know, they have beliefs pretty much similar to where I grew up. And it's like, there's no way that they're going to look at that and look at, you know, democratic party and go, yeah, no, I'm totally going to vote for that. Yeah. What Cuban is coming from socialism to vote for socialism, you know? (laughs) And and so, and so that's one of those things like, like like, both parties need to understand that, you know, they've got to get away from this, this weird idea that people of color are going to vote for Democrats and only white people are going to vote for Republicans, Mm -hmm. but that, you know, as a Republican, your policies have to gear towards white people. And as Democrats, your policies have to act like they're going to gear towards everybody, but then only gear towards (laughs) white people. Right. Well, I think Uh, to myself, we don't want to talk about color when we're the people benefiting at the moment. You know what I mean? Absolutely. (laughs) We're on the top of the food chain. Stop telling us about it. We are, you know. And 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 it goes back to this whole concept that we have to get 
we have to get back to the 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 reality that American was an ideal. It was never supposed to be a color or a creed right. or anything like that. It was it was it's and until you until we all get back to that idea that you know the person that we disagree with is American, right? Um, that's going to that's going to be a hard sell because you have a group of you have groups of people out there right now that because they dis- disagree with each other they call each other un-American and that doesn't make any sense right no so, I, I think there's certain white people that see the white savior complex as in i'm a rich white guy i will help you like you don't have to complain i'm here to help you and i think uh minorities colored people black people brown people they just want to help themselves they don't want a handout from rick scott they want right. you to remove the barriers that stop them from becoming a rick scott and 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 to me you know that that idea of removing barriers is exactly what you know that's that's that needs to be a part of that discussion for mm-hmm. democrats and and republicans you yeah. know because we all have they both have different barriers that they've put up in place in order to stop certain things. And that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I think uh, what uh, Kajanji Brown Jackson is an awesome version of that right now. Like um, Biden could have nominated anybody, the most qualified person, but he chose to emphasize a black woman because she was underrepresented, um, underrepresented. And see, I hear voices before I see people. And when she was talking, all I heard was like um, Vanessa Huxtable as an adult. And I just saw that I looked up at the screen and heard this, saw this big smile. And I was like, oh, she's adorable. And she's smart as fuck, too. And so I like the fact that he picked her. Like, I'm a dis- disability advocate. I would love to see somebody disabled on the court. No, you take your place, KBJ. You know what I mean? Go ahead and do it because you're awesome. I'm really excited for her. I just wanted to slip that in. So number three, of course, is we are going to enforce the laws that we have, and we're going to increase the penalties for theft and violent crime. So I don't think he wants to reform. He was part of the criminal justice reform, him and um, Cory Booker. The two mm-hmm. black guys in the Senate, they put on the crime bill and they couldn't come to a consensus. So I think it's real weird that like a year after that discussion for compromise, he comes out with this. We're going to be harsher. We're going to be harsher to people. And I think it goes right along. If you're not going to think about the laws and how they are affecting people negatively, then you just want to enforce the laws harsher across the board. Or do you think they might disproportionately continue to affect the same people they've been uh, they're gonna just they're gonna continue yeah here's here's the reality you have what is called uh officer discretion mm-hmm. and so you have you have officers that have the ability to take someone who stole some, let, you know i'm gonna go with a classic example let's say that you have two different people steal the same thing from target for example one's white one's black the reality is is that even by the doj's own information you know, black people are going to be most likely sent off to jail more frequently than their white counterparts are. Yep. And, and, and that's unfortunate. Now, if you're going to, if, if you're going to remove that discretion and it's no matter what the person who's going to steal is going to go to jail, then, okay. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with it simply because, um, Personally, I think we have way too many people in jail as it is, and you're not addressing why somebody is stealing. Violent offenses, on the other hand, yeah, okay, that actually needs to be addressed and actually needs, you you have that need for people to be in jail over over things like that, like domestic violence, for example. Public safety, but still a police officer has a discretion of what he calls violent. Exactly, and and so you have to address that issue at hand. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, you have to be more willing to take the take the 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 actual violent crimes and jail them. Yeah, on a path to reform. And I also believe mm-hmm. that if we 
if we demonize police officers in the media and don't promote the good officers, then I think we just come with an understanding that the base standard of a police officer is corrupt and evil. And if we don't promote good officers and highlight them and let them know that they're on a pedestal for us, they won't attempt to be on a pedestal for us. They won't try and be better to be the best cop in a corrupt system is still bad, right? Because we don't promote them, but there's 95% of the police officers out there are really good, honorable people. And we don't say that enough. We just broadcast uh, the Derek Chauvin's of the world and say, mm-hmm. that's what police officers are like. That's not what it's like. And police officers stood up against him and said it was wrong. And mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not about the crimes. It's about the standardization of the crimes. You know, if you're going to consider one guy looking at you wrong is a violent act, but another guy is just a a timeout. Yeah, that's a real issue. Exactly. And, And that's so. So unfortunately, like anything else, I I still think that that one's not addressed. I think it's just going to affect one group of people more than another unless you actually take away um the ability to, uh, for an officer to, uh, yeah. to make their own determination. It's like, look, this is what the accusation is. Here's the evidence. Boom. Right. And I, I, I know it sounds stupid, but I always believed that we should privatize cams. If a police officer has to wear a, like a, a cam, I don't, what do they call them? A vest body cam, cam. Or a body cam. I think we should um, privatize those and we should also have body cams. And then it's our video against his video. You know what I mean? And I know it's a shitty world to live in, but we live in an evidence-based world. And sometimes your word isn't going to be taken the same because of the systemic problems of our criminal justice system. And that's, I mean, and, and that's the tough part about that is, is that Mm -hmm. by asking, you know, by asking citizens to turn on body cams and like this weird idea, like right now floating around about having cameras in, in school classrooms. No, what? Yeah. Who wants, I'm sorry. That's just a, (laughs) like, it's this weird, you know, at some point, like what you have to agree to is, is that look, we're, we're all getting standardized education. Mm-hmm. You know, and that standardized education is, is for the most part, pretty fucking like it's as bland as flour for the most part. Right. You know, um, but if you like the people that think that their kids are learning fucking critical race theory in kindergarten, that's insane. But they are they are complaining about something. They're, they're just misusing the term critical race theory. They still have an issue with being blamed for racism when they here's, continue it you know <laughs> right. so so here's so here's my answer is is that if if you are that concerned about what your kid is being taught then you need to pull them out and put them in homeschool well, yeah because, or charter school yep uh, because otherwise like what you're going to do is you're going to be the karen that upends mm-hmm. everybody else's education right and time and pulls everybody else down rather than actually dealing, you know, actually letting teachers teach. Yeah. And, and like we all get, we all got the same, you know, I wouldn't say we all like a lot of us got the same fucking textbooks. And in some cases, some of those textbooks have been used for like 20 fucking years. Yeah. And not one of my textbooks ever blamed me for racism. <laughs> I, right. can't, I can't remember a time when I was like, Oh, I'm racist. <laughs> I had the choice to learn things that others didn't, and I got mm-hmm. a chance to expand on that. But Ron DeSantis surveilling the innocent is never anything the good guys have ever done. You know, <laughs> it's and, and this weird idea that the government is your friend is just absolutely bonkers to me. But you know, yeah, how do a ever, group of people that distrust the government over trust the government? It's easy when you you know when you really truly believe that your party is the only one that's ever going to make things right or make America, America again. And it's, mm-hmm. it's indoctrination is what it is. Yeah. And look, like I get it. You know, there's this idea that, you know, every, there's this idea that every government that comes into power is going to radically change, you know, your way of life. And, and here's my response to that if you're worried about the government radically changing your life, then stop voting for idiots that are radically changing somebody else's life. Mm-hmm. It should be really boring, really 
really lame administration of collective ideology. There used in the 60s, believe it or not, there was a homogenization of representation to whereas there was the Dixiecrats that were on the Democrat side, and there was like the moderates, like the Rockefellers on the Republican side. And somebody said, we're not getting enough donations because we're, we're not as diametrically opposed to each other as we should be. But there was a consensus of normalcy until they realized that they needed for profit to separate the parties, you know, and now they've just polar opposite at each other, but I think they're coming back. I just want to say, I think they're coming back. The moves by Vladimir Putin, I think is really making a stark contrast. Like there is no middle ground between communism and democracy. You're either for democracy or you're for communism. So we talked about number four really quick and it was immigrations. Um, Mm -hmm. Nations have borders. And so we should finish the wall and name it after Donald Trump. Do we have anything really to say on that other than ha ha? Uh, no, no uh, other than no, just no, <laughs> no. And no, like understand that, you know, yeah, nations have borders. Yes. And clearly this moron has forgotten what a, what a hundred dollar ladder will do. Or the <laughs> fact that it got built so badly that a section of it just got fucking blown over. <laughs> Look, you're going to convince you're going to convince you're going to have a better time convincing me if you say hey look let's use some modern technology to number one find people and number two track them mm-hmm. than you are if you think that building a wall is somehow magically going to stop stop this right no what stops it is being able to surveil your border a lot easier and be able to figure out where people are so that way you can pinpoint where they're crossing and it's mm-hmm. going to save you a lot more time and a lot more manpower than building a fucking wall that somebody is either going to a climb over or b dig under. Yeah. I mean, do you think that Ukraine would have been saved if they had built a wall? Oh, fuck no. Are you kidding? <laughs> do you think um, Cuba would be safe if they built a wall from us? No, no borders. The- don't Borders prevent progress. You know, they just, they, they eliminate things. They, they restrict things. That's what they're there for. And, and that's, and the reality is, is that you're going to have a lot, you're going to have a lot better picture of who's crossing where with Mm -hmm. upgraded surveillance technology than you are with a fucking wall because people are going to, you know, people are going to go underground in order to avoid the wall. And if you have surveillance technology, people are going to be less likely to dig underground. And number two, you're going to have an easier time figuring out where people are on one side and where they're popping up on the other side. If they are digging underground. Again, surveilling the innocent is never anything that anybody good ever did. So I don't, for, why do we need to care where they are? We should just be happy that they're coming here to work and going back home. Like we talked about earlier, right? Open border thing. So, or, you know, yeah, people might be coming across, but look, you know, it's like, all right, you know, let's help you get, let's help you get a green card. And if you don't have a job in in 90 days, you got to go back. And I want to say for the record, Democrats deport more people than any Republicans ever have. Obama and Biden have restricted, denied, or deported more immigrants more migrants than any republican ever did Mm -hmm. they just did it so so and and i mean and and let's be real honest Uh, anybody who has ever read about how um how people get across from baja california into actual you know into california proper Mm -hmm. they're digging underneath the fucking border wall there and and tunneling into other people's houses right like what the f- okay so you got you got a fucking wall there and what do you and look at what's happening yeah El or Trapo uh, had caves everywhere he had tunnels everywhere. or the or the narcos who are literally building fucking you know drone submarines to sail drugs across the gulf into different areas right. yeah i've seen those uh columbia had those so so to me the that's the funny part is is that you know you literally have the case for why enhanced surveillance makes more sense than a fucking wall. I, uh, that I agree on because here's what I think 
there's fentanyl in Mexico. We need to stop it, but we can't get into Mexico to do anything about it because there's this border preventing us from actually dealing with it. <laughs> and that's what bugs right. me. You want to, you, you tie the war on drugs to the war on immigration when neither war has to be fought. If you got rid of the border, you could step over it and say, stop before it came here. You could talk to Mexico and say, Hey, guess what? We got to work together because there's no border, you know? <laughs> right. You know, actually be able to sit down and go, Hey, you know, Mexico, this is where we got people crossing right now. And those yeah. people that we found, we were able to stop them, get them. They had a ton of fentanyl on them. Yeah. So here's we the track- evidence that shows where they're coming from. We, yeah. we were able to follow them from point A to point B. I need you to do something about what happened at point A. We got point B taken care of. Yeah. You know? And that's the thing is, is like, I, no Democrat has been anti and very few democrats i should say are anti-border enforcement right that's the issue it's that's the, the point the, where they prove that they're american you know <laughs> yeah it's just that you know the democrats by and large said no let's that's a waste of resources how about we actually create enhanced surveillance and that way we can figure right. out where people are crossing and how about if we go after the criminals and not the people that are just here so yeah, that one is really fucking dumb. Yeah, all right. I you know how I feel about board. So how about this? Wait, where did it go? It is okay, economy growth. Explain this one to me. We will grow America's economy and starve Washington's economy. Now I think we all want that. Jeffrey is the libertarian. That's your breadbasket, right? Yep. Yep. Doesn't that so, go under like closing down institutions and stuff like that? Or does that mean what would that mean to you? starving that, washington's what, economy what that means is uh what to me what that would mean is uh, ideally if it was actually true is is that you would have a lot of bureaucratic red tape that gets cut so that way you could do more business globally and be able to uh, you know have american products be sold a lot faster and a lot better than the way that the current government handles it because the government does you know weird things in terms of being able to export okay. uh to different areas so you know basically allowing allowing the american people to choose their markets which they sell versus letting the government choose their markets and you know base and basically the way that i see it is you know if if we're going to look at restrictive measures on selling mm-hmm. what would make sense is is that the government goes okay you can't sell to north korea okay, you can't sell to Iran. Okay. You can't sell to Russia. And that's, you know, and basically what it boils down to is, is that, you know, you have, you have some issues where you'll have some countries work as third parties where they'll buy something from you and then they'll move it on to Russia. And, and, and I mean, China has done that consistently where they'll, Mm -hmm. you know, we have sanctions on North Korea. So China will buy something from us and then they'll send it on to North Korea. Right. Cuba too. Cuba does yep. work on airplanes of North Korea, right? We call yep. it. A, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What I see and what I hear him saying is po- po- politicians' salaries should be based more on the deficit, right? Like they shouldn't get a raise as long as there's a deficit. If they should get paid gen- as long as there's as long right. as there's a deficit. Like their, their, pay, their pay should be tied to the GDP and the deficit. And the benefits of their community. You know what I mean? We I should would, all share that makes it. Sense. That makes we, sense. Should, we should start cutting their insurance down a little bit. We should start budgeting based on that. Right? Where is the budget most bloated? Let's start with Nancy Pelosi's uh, stock sales. Anyway, mm-hmm. Here's, um, wait, oh, elections. Let's go with elections here. How about that? Government mm-hmm. reform, free and fair elections today's democratic party is trying to rig elections and pack the courts because they've given up on democracy i think i just want to add that one in because it's a bunch of rhetoric and i don't have i mean i just want to say what (laughs) Uh, i'm going to go with i'm going to go with both parties looking at each other and saying no you because it's the republicans do the same fucking thing Right. It's no different. It is absolutely no different. And, and, you know, we could absolutely make that discussion of, you know, how, how would you reform elections in order to be more uh, fair or more cohesive? And the answer would be as, as I would do away with political districting boundaries mm. and you would have, yep. what you would have is you would have a statewide vote that would go and you would have, 
you'd say, okay, I'm going to vote Republican or Democrat based on these particular, you know, these particular issues. And then based on that, you know, you would find out who's voting Republican, who's voting Democrat, and then that's how you would build your representation. So places like North Carolina might go more Democrat one time, but then, you know, in let's say four years, they might go more Republican, more conservative. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you, what you would do is, okay, here's the platform. You voted on the platform. Now you have to choose the people who are going to represent you on that platform. Right. So rather than doing this weird, uh, we're going to vote for the person and hope they uphold the platform. Uh You know, here's your platform. This is what you're sticking to. Now, Republicans, here's your group of people who are going to vote for the platform. Democrat, here's your group of people who are going to represent that platform. And I think that would make it a lot more fair and and that you would actually have fair representation without boundaries. And, and so, you know, how, based on how many ever representatives you get, how many ever senators you get, you know, at a certain point, you'd have to have a cutoff where, you know, let's say, you know, you've got two senators, 50, 50. So one Senator is going to be Democrat. One Senator is going to be Republican, but let's say that, you know, at 70, 30, for example, like let's say a state vote 70, 30, you know, or, or 75, 25, whatever, however you set that up, Mm -hmm. that would mean that both of the senators from that state are going to be, you know, Republican or both are going to be Democrat. And then that way, what you end up having is more, a more likely representation rather than, you know, you have a weird fucking, these wonky districts that, lean Republican or lean Democrat because of how they've managed to draw them. It doesn't right. like that, that, that's, that sort of shit is just weird and crazy because it doesn't actually lead to representation. It leads to, you know, uh, a partisan representation and mm-hmm. it leads, it's straight up gerrymandering. So I think if you want to get rid be... of Jerry, if you want to get rid of gerrymandering, what you Everyone actually have to do, that what you have to do is you have to have people vote for the platform mm-hmm. and then you will have to let people choose the representatives after that, that are going to represent them on that platform. And then that way, you know, you know, it's yeah. like for the Democrats, this is who's representing us for the Republicans. Here's who's representing us. I would like to take the R and D off of local politics altogether. I don't, I wish People didn't couldn't run on being a Democrat or a Republican, but had to run on their record and experience and plans. You know, that's for I don't me. Like that too, but that's never that's never going to happen. Yeah, I know. And then there's proportional representation, which I always like. Uh, the Center for Election Science has a lot of great ideas on mm-hmm. appro- approval voting, a proportionate voting, just some really good stuff. Um, so number eight here is the nuclear family is crucial to civilization it's god's design for humanity and it's propaganda and religion and religion right thank you let's remove i mean god has a place but it isn't in my fucking government right in separation of church and state and this is neither um so that's insane yeah like, yeah that's I, I have nothing against a person who wants to have their nuclear family i think that's great right. and fantastic but for you know and but the libertarian me says i just want gay couples to protect their trans kids and their weed with fully automatic weapons and this does nothing to advance that yeah i don't so, want a definition on what a nuclear family is i want that open to the family to decide you know yeah the, the when the government decides who's a family that's not a good deal right and that's gonna go i'm gonna throw this one in here now number nine it's gender and life science which is men and women are biologically different made (laughs) male and female he created them what wait what sorry i should have read that one in advance male and female he created them modern technology has confirmed it's, it's more christian, I, oh it's more christian propaganda <laughs> bullshit <laughs> i'm sorry about that one no, i had that read that one earlier but i was like what is going on here so sorry um they they believe there's bullshit. only two genders and god decides what they are a guy that we've never met and probably doesn't exist so let's just go with yeah leave us alone <laughs> Religious liberty and big tech, the Democratic Party and their big tech allies are not merely secular. They have virtually created a new religion. 
that's insane. Yeah, it seems like they're getting more insane as we go along. Yeah, there... so I was actually just thinking the same thing. Like, this is like literally going through like the seven levels of hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like, I'm I'm sorry, but you know, the, uh, the libertarian in me says, look, if you want a platform that's going to uphold your values, then you have to create that platform and adjudicate it properly. So if you, you know, there's a reason why, you know, when dating sites, you have places like Christian mingle <laughs> yeah, and JPEG, JDate, whatever J yeah, and J date. And, and, uh, there was a, one that I got an ad for that was for, for hin uh, for Hindus to find their partners. And I'm like, okay, weird one for to come across my feed but sure <laughs> okay and that's the thing is is that if you want a platform that's it's that's going to be more religion centric then you mm -hmm. need to create that platform and i'm there's nothing wrong with that you know but you're going to see the same shit pop up in any platform that you're you know you're going to have people that are you know that claim to be christian and then start spouting racist bullshit yeah you've got people who are going to sign up and just be trolls and yeah. you know you're going to have to adjudicate that the way that you want to the reality is, is, is that this is not exactly a, uh, your, your claim versus what reality is are very different. In fact, I want to, there was a study done about, uh, on, uh, on how Twitter handles, uh, different pieces of information. And surprisingly, Twitter tends to lean more conservative. <laughs> yeah. So the reality is, is, is that, you know, you can make all the claims that you want, but I go with the Sagan standard. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. You don't have yeah. proof that that's the issue. Right. You have, you, you have what you, you have your feelings. And I believe that you were the party that said, fuck your feelings. Yeah. Right. 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 So here's, here's the reality is, is that, you know, people keep people do not understand the fucking first uh, the first amendment at all the government cannot censor you these what are is? private entities they get to choose what's on their site i don't agree with it a lot of the time right. but it's their choice and you're the one that is literally signing up for a free site and that isn't free because the cost is your data and you're the one that is exposing yourself as a religious zealot public access America. It's always funny because, like, you know, especially because as you know, libertarians, we get a ton of shit. Even amongst other libertarians, we're... I think political philosophy is a lot like religion, and where there's moments you have to go on faith and trust what somebody else is saying. The main, the main focus is it's just like less dependence on the government because, well, we've seen how that's gone, and you don't have to do that if you think about it in a human way. You know, more dependence on connections with each other. So you can always bring it back to what would one human do for another what would a hundred do for a hundred people, people looking, looking out for people. people find public access america anywhere you find your favorite podcast every sunday and thursday and join the chat on youtube at public access america every sunday noon eastern 9 a.m pacific communities looking out for community public access america history in the making making history in the making in the making in the making Right, because one side is like, yeah, go ahead. You have the freedom to believe what you want. And the other side is like, thank you, we will, but you can't. <laughs> it's just so fucked up to me. And just, I don't know if people understand what human nature is, but if you get a group together, that group will divide. Because you don't believe 100% of everything that everyone else believes, and you will fracture, and you will become two groups, and then you will become 10 groups, because that's the way human nature works. You can't. You can't just say that one group is homogenous. Homogenous. There is no monolithic version of the American, where there there's 350 no. million of us, and we're all different. And the right. last one, the last one is America first. America will not be dependent on any country, and we will manufacture everything here, and we won't trade with anybody. <laughs> These are your Republicans. We wondered what their plans were, right? And this is, is this is just look, the baseless you know, of eleven. Here's so so. Uh, 
there are some there are some benefits to thinking about America first. It's it's kind of that a whole idea of when you're on an airplane and something happens, you have to put your mask on first in order to help somebody else. Because sure, sure. if you're struggling to get your kid's oxygen mask on and you fail to do that because you suffocate, mm-hmm. then two people are going to die rather than one. Yeah. We and we saw that with, you know, COVID for example, with a lot of the with a lot of the supplies that we needed. We relied on another country to give us those supplies and when they had to fight the same issue, we didn't have jack shit available to us. Right. There is some and, and now we're seeing it with semiconductors, which is a huge one. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely some viability in thinking about how you're going to supply and take care of your country first. Absolutely. If you don't think, if you don't think China does that, let me tell you about forced technology transfer, because that's exactly yep. what they're doing. They are thinking about their country first, and they are forcing companies to transfer technology. Now, yeah. that said, as much as I hate to quote Ben Shapiro, there is one thing that he has always said. When it comes to supply deficits, as an individual, you're always going to have a deficit with the grocery store. Think about that for a second. The grocery store isn't just going to come to you and be like, hey, I'm going to buy your thing. No, you're always going to have a supply deficit with a grocery store because your exchange is, I'm giving you money, you're giving me my stuff that I'm wanting. And that's how it should work, is is that you know if there's something from China that we want, there should be an exchange of money, we get what we want, period, end of story. Right. Yeah. The issue at hand is how we're spending money on ourselves internally and running up a debt. You know, mm-hmm. For us, wars in other countries, turns out they're pretty fucking expensive and they don't exactly lead to as much income generation as you want. Whereas if you manufacture a bunch of stuff to sell outside, it turns out you tend to make some money off of that. Right. And so for America, there, there are some things that we have to include. And, and, and if you're going to, you know, do that whole, well, America first bullshit. Okay. Then great. Let's, let's start with energy independence. Let's start with an electrical grid that is modernized that has, more forms of energy connected to it that reduces its reliance on energy sources from outside countries. Absolutely. As I have said multiple times, the idea that the Saudis could literally cut off production, tank our economy is a problem. It is. And it's another problem that Republicans support the Saudis endeavors. Like, wasn't it Mitt Romney that lost an election because he shipped jobs overseas? Isn't it always Republicans that are getting caught shipping jobs overseas? And so to say America first is just saying, hey, we screwed up to me. Well, and there's, I mean, they both jobs overseas. And, and then the funny thing is, is that both of them get caught, um, mm-hmm. you know, hiring the quote unquote illegal immigrants. And, right. you know, uh, so the reality God, it comes is, back to the border thing again. God damn it. <laughs> so the reality is, is, is that I absolutely agree that we shouldn't be dependent on any country. That's any right. Country. I think that that's important. And I think that, you know, we have the ability to be, uh, a production powerhouse mm-hmm. but that you know strategically we've ships we have shipped stuff overseas to places like china taiwan uh south korea vietnam yep thailand we have we have done that because it is cheaper to do manufacturing in those countries that's Period where the story. resources are the, i mean the nickel and titanium aren't here they're in ukraine let's have ukraine manufacture it so we don't have to ship buckets of titanium here right and that's how we started doing it but that's how we lost out and 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 you either have to bring the resources in and manufacture it here, or you have to set up your manufacturing where the resources are going or where it's easier to get them. Right. And 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 that is that's the honest answer. Uh, but it wasn't just that they set it up where the resources were uh, in terms of raw materials. They set it up where the resources cost less, i.e., human mm-hmm. capital. Well, yeah, they set up in China, even though maybe Taiwan has a resource because it's easier to ship it to Taiwan to China from Taiwan and then have cheap labor. Yeah, we invest in we we invest in communism. We invested in Russia. We invested in China. All the strength they have comes from a capitalism, a global capitalism, right? Like they Mm -hmm. couldn't have become what they are, the force they are, if we didn't give them the money to do what we do there. Like if we imagine yeah, if, if we Mexico, didn't if we didn't ship if we didn't ship the jobs over there. Right. Absolutely. 
Or wait, if we accepted a dollar more for our back scratcher that was built in a, in Mexico, you know? And yeah, so I don't, I don't like America first. I like America's first. Can we change that to America's first? I, I, I personally wouldn't mind that, but at the same time, it's like, they're not going to do that. No. And, and their version of America first is, well, my policies first. Yeah. Me, uh, my, uh, my people. And, and that's bullshit. It's like, look, you know, it, it has to be number one, our people, and our American people. Yeah. And it has to be things that benefit the greater good. And, and those things are, for example, there is no reason why we shouldn't be the, the powerhouse producing renewable energy. There is no reason why we shouldn't have on-demand nuclear sources. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to, number one, sell new electric cars. Number two, sell conversion kits so that way our older vehicles can get upgraded to be electric. Yeah. You know, there is no reason why, you know, with the amount of oil that we have that we're exporting, that we should be bringing oil in from any country. Right. We shouldn't be dependent on it. You know, you know? so but I, I just think that the border is a stupid designation of where progress should stop. If, if our industry needs to expand up into Canada or down into Mexico, then it should be a, we should be able to do that. Well, and we that's the other thing too, is, is, is that even our electrical grid connects into Canada, Canada and Mexico, and we supply power both directions. Right. So the reality is, is that we need energy independence for ourselves to continue to supply to places mm-hmm. like Canada and Mexico. And people are migrating here because it's shitty there. If we make it better there, they won't be migrating here. And believe me when I say that's a loss for America and not being a melting pot, sending people back to their own countries to make their countries better will diminish our ability to build a greater nation. You know, we want that melting pot. We want the best from every country, but we need to, we need to figure out that they come here to learn, go back to teach you know, instead of stay here to earn. Well, and that's the other issue is, is that when you look at some of the great industrialization is, is that, you know, we had people coming in from other countries, Germany, for Mm -hmm. example, during, during, you know, their, the, their Wunderschaft, I think is what it was called um, in German. um, Like after we did all of our, our huge investments to fight off, you know, the growth of communism, they were bringing in Turkish and Greek workers in order to increase their ability to, you know, make products in Germany that could, you know, lead that lead to their global domination as it is. There is no reason why, you know, we shouldn't be manufacturing here, but having people come across the border in order to do it and make it easier for them to also go back home. Germany, uh, we're, we're running out of time, but I want to say Germany brought in over a million Syrian refugees and everybody was worried about that. And it turns out they were a benefit to Germany's economy. You know why? Because people started buying things, needing things, purchasing things, working on things, filling positions, but basically driving the economy through consumerism. You know, every refugee needed a table, needed a new shirt, needed a pair of socks, needed a house, needed a lawnmower. And in that, it boosted the economy. You know what I mean? Like immigrants aren't the, the stress that we think they are. Right. Any, uh, any recommendations, any movies, anything you watched, anything you get, you know, my recommendation right now, I think is, is that people need to take, well, I mean, Russian warship, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Um, no, I think the, I think the biggest, uh, I think the biggest thing that people need to do is make sure that in the midst of all this chaos, you are taking time to keep your own mental health in check. These are, this is something that's scary. There is, there's no question about, you know, the insanity that life has, has brought upon us, the politics have brought upon us and everybody has to be willing to take a step back, take a fucking deep breath Mm -hmm. and really think about things, you know, and, a lot of things could be solved by leaving each other the fuck alone. Yeah. You don't know what people are going through. And, and, and what, and you only need to be present in their life when they ask you for help and you only need to be helping them in the way that they're specifically asking. And that's all. And that's what it boils down to. Just like you don't want somebody involved in your life. And when you do want somebody involved in your life, you only want them to help in a way that you're specifically asking. 
for sure. And you know, the other, you know, on that subject, when I ask somebody if they need help and they say no, I don't push the issue. I don't try and force myself into a position. And I think people find it odd or that I don't care. I very much care. That's why I asked, but I'm not going to push you because I trust you because you're my friend, you know? Exactly. And that's, and that's what it boils down to. Okay. I'll wrap up with, uh, fuck you, Vladimir Putin, but I love you Russian people. I love the Russian people. And, you know, my hope is, is that one day things will calm down enough. Things will be yeah. great. And I would, I would love to come see you guys and experience your culture because I really do think that, you know, based on where I grew up, I probably have plenty in common with the Russian people. They just want to be left alone to live their lives in peace and mm-hmm. have their nice little corner of the world. To those who would tear the world down, we will defeat you. This is our moment. This is our time. To those who seek peace and security, we support you. Yes, we can. And to all those who have wondered if America's beacon still burns as bright, tonight we prove once more that the true strength of our nation comes not from the might of our arms or the scale of our wealth, but from the enduring power of our ideals, democracy, liberty, opportunity, and unyielding hope. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbow. Nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, they will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. Ask not, yes, we can. What your country can do for you, I have a dream. Ask what you can do to your country. I, poor little children, yes, we can. One day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Things are Everybody, bad. Knows things are Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. It's in this a depression. lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Welcome, welcome to public, to public access, access America. America. Yes, we can. Sunday live streams Sunday on live YouTube. I wanted to run out of that tunnel for my dad. On Twitter, on Twitter, Twitter Apple, Apple, Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts, Stitcher, Stitcher, Smart, Stitcher Smart, Radio, Smart Radio, Radio, Radio Public, and, and Spotify. Spotify. Yes, we yes, we can. Public Access public America. America. History, History in the making. Making history in the making. making. In the making. In the making.